Washington finished his remarks and the officers were silent. It was at that moment that he feared he had lost them, that they had not heard him or that they had heard him and rejected him. He paused. He reached into his pocket again. And this time he pulled out a letter. It was a letter from Joseph Jones, a delegate to the Congress from Virginia. It was a somewhat perfunctory letter, a letter in which Joseph Jones assured the commander-in-chief that Congress would indeed pay the army. Washington began to read the letter. He stumbled over some words. He reached into his pocket again, and he pulled out his glasses. These were new to him, for in the Washington papers there is a letter written only about two weeks before this event, a letter to David Rittenhouse, a Philadelphia scientist, optometrist, in which Washington wrote to Rittenhouse that he had received the glasses, but he regretted he was having a little bit of trouble using them. And so now he took them out and put them on. His officers had never seen the commander-in-chief wearing glasses. He apologized to the officers, telling them, gentlemen, you must forgive me. My hair has grown gray and my eyes have grown dim in the service of my country. Probably not a dry eye in the house. He finished reading the Jones letter, returned the letter and the address and his glasses, and left. Almost immediately, Henry Knox, sitting in the audience, rose to his feet, moved a series of resolutions supporting the general, supporting the Congress, and within a matter of 20 minutes, it was all done and approved. Do you think the stage had been set? Oh, yes. And I came to that conclusion in a rather unusual way. One of the great documents, the central document of this event, is in fact the Newburgh Address, one of the prized possessions at the Massachusetts Historical Society. The original Newburgh Address, that is the original written by Washington's secretary, is in the Library of Congress. And it's a fine document, written in the good hand of a secretary. But the copy at the Massachusetts Historical Society is written in the hand of Washington. And there's a significant difference. The copy in Washington's hand is in large letters. Large enough, you see, so that he could read it without his glasses. So what happened at headquarters Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? No direct evidence, but I am convinced that Washington and his secretaries spent considerable time writing which was one of the most important speeches ever delivered in American history. And after they had written the speech, Washington looked at it and probably said, I'll never be able to read that. And so he sat at his desk and he copied the speech out in his own large hand so that he'd be able to read it.